Good day, brothers and sisters, and uh, I'm so much uh, overwhelmed to welcome you on this session. And this is a precursor, the eve of uh, the beginning of our camp meeting. And this is a testing session, although I'm going to do a presentation. Uh, and uh, this is about uh, the, uh, the presentation of the today is um, the continuing series on uh, um, our higher calling. And today I'm going to look at um, a very critical uh, uh, presentation which prepare us even for what is going to uh, start happening uh, tomorrow here. And uh, the presentation of the hour is uh, uh, medical missionary work, a cleansing work. This is what uh, I want to look into. And uh, I hope that uh, you will be blessed. So I just want to speak a short word of prayer as uh, we begin this presentation. Our Father, which art in heaven, we thank you, Lord. We thank you because you have gathered us here that uh, we might learn of thee. And so I pray that uh, you may guide us in everything and uh, let the Holy Spirit take charge and take control of uh, everything in this place that uh, your name be glorified in Jesus' name. Amen. And so uh, I want to look at uh, medical missionary work, uh, cleansing work. This is a work that is represented in the book of Isaiah chapter 58. And uh, I want to explore some things with you so that uh, you may understand how this work is uh, a cleansing work and a work that um, will uh, 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 divest us of our self and uh, be able to uh, make us sound the loud cry that has been missing uh, in the church, the loud cry that has been missing in the church. And so, welcome to our viewing medical mission work, a cleansing, uh, a cleansing uh, work. Uh, uh, the book of Third John 2 says, be, be, Beloved, I wish above all things that thou mayest prosper and be in health even as thy soul Prospered. This is the words of the Lord that uh, we may prosper in our health as even our soul prospered. So the two things, health, the physical health and the spiritual health, goes hand in hand. If one is impaired, then the other is also impaired. We should have a high estimate of truth and of value of souls. Time is short and there is a great work to be done. If you feel no interest in the work that is going on, if you will not encourage medical missionary work in the churches, it will be done without your consent. For it is the work of God and it must be done. My brethren and sisters, take your position on the law side and be honest, active, courageous, co-workers with Christ, laboring with him to seek and save the lost. And the law of self Preservation is the law of serving others. And as we serve others, we are divested of self and Christ takes control of our heart to cleanse us from every uh, to cleanse us from every defilement. And this is what we see in 80, page 75, paragraph 2, that this work of medical missionary work, it is a high and cleansing, a higher calling. And it is, uh, it is a cleansing work because it puts us on the position of the Lord's side. It is the divine plan that we shall work as the disciples work. Physical healing is bound up with the gospel commission. In the work of the gospel, teaching and healing are never to be separated. The ministry of healing, page 141, and Christian service, page 133, paragraph 6. We shall see that when you separate the two, Great evil is created in the church. And what we are doing at such a time as this is actually uh, uh, doing away with evil. And so if there is anything that brings about evil, then it means that it's not a higher calling and a cleansing work, but a work of falling and not rising. The work which the disciples did, we also are to do. Every Christian is to be a missionary in sympathy and compassion. We are to minister to those in need of help, seeking with unselfish earnestness to lighten the woes of 
suffering humanity. And so you find that in the work of medical missionary work, actually we are uh, uh, helping uh, others uh, to come into position uh, where they can worship God in truth and in spirit. This is the work that the Lord has given unto us to do. This is the work that the Lord has given unto us to do. And there is no other work that should engross our minds than spreading the gospel of physical healing, which will put the mind in the right position to be able to grasp spiritual uh, things. And uh, we are told in the future men in the common walks of life will be impressed by the Spirit of the Lord to leave their ordinary employment and go forth to proclaim the last message of mercy. As rapidly as possible they are to be prepared for labor. That success may crown their efforts. They cooperate with heavenly agencies, for they are willing to spend and be spent in the service of the Master. No one is authorized to hinder these workers. They are to be bidden Godspeed as they go forth to fulfill the Great Commission. No tounding word is to be spoken of them as in the rough places of the earth they sow the gospel seed. And so, as you see in Testimonies, Volume 7, page 27, paragraph 1, this work is part of the Great Commission. And the Great Commission is go teach, baptize and teach them, uh, uh, telling them to observe all things whatsoever I have told you. And you see the Gospel Commission is the a cleansing commission which brings people from darkness to light. Medical missionary work and the Gospel minister are the channels through which God seeks to pour a constant supply of his goodness they are to be as the river of life for the irrigation of his church. Now, this is interesting coming from Christian Service, page 133, paragraph 7, that it is a work and is, it is as a river of life from the irrigation of his church. And what does a river contain actually? A river contains water and water represents the Holy Spirit. And so you can, uh, you can uh, remember one thing, you can remember one thing that uh, on the great day of the feast, Christ said that, uh, Come unto me, ye who thirst, and you shall be filled, and out of your bellies shall flow forth rivers of life. And now see what she is saying, that the medical missionary work is like a river of life for the irrigation of the church. And so God is going to work in a different way during the last great work of Isaiah chapter 58 with the medical missionary team. While Satan will be breathing unto people an unholy spirit, to counterfeit the miracles that are done by the saints, God will use natural, simple natural remedies, and the consecrated worker, the consecrated medical missionary worker, will be a streamlet of the river of life. That is the Holy Spirit, and it is the virtue of the Holy Spirit in the medical missionary worker that will go through the natural remedies that he is or she is administering, and then the person will be healed. And remember, every time Christ healed somebody, he told them, go and sin no more. So while the medical missionary worker will be administering the natural remedies, he will be imparting the virtue, not only for the physical healing, but his sanctified life, the life of Jesus Christ flowing in him and going to the sick person. And the person will not only be benefited physically, but also spiritually. We continue reading that again and again I have been instructed that the medical missionary work is to bear the same relation to the work of the third angel's message that the arm and hand 
bear to the body and the direction of the divine head they are to work unitedly in preparing the way for the coming of Christ. And the third angel's message is, if anyone receives the mark of the beast, the image or his number, the same, shall be visited by the wrath of God which is poured out without indignation. And so the medical missionary work is the third angel's message, and we know that the third angel's message is righteousness by faith. What is righteousness by faith in verity? It is believing that the word of the Lord shall do what it has said it shall do. That means that uh, the medical missionary worker is not depending on the herbs that he is administering, but the virtue of Christ which gives him the spiritual blessing. It is the same virtue that works in these natural remedies. And so it is not the work of the medical missionary, but the work of Christ himself. And then it becomes righteousness by faith. The right arm of the body of the truth is to be constantly active, constantly at work, and God will strengthen it. But it is not to be made the body. At the same time, the body is not to say to the arm, I have no need of thee. The body has need of the arm in order to be active, aggressive work. Both have their appointed work and each will suffer great loss if worked independently of the other testimonies. Volume 6, page 288, also found in Christian Service, page 134, paragraph 4. We have come to a time when every member of the church should take hold of medical missionary work. And why is this so? We find that in the country living, she says, as the religious liberty subverts the, liber the freedom of nations, it will be important for their own sake, for your own sake, to know the nature of disease, it is cause, it is prevention and cure, and anywhere you go, you will find a field open for you to work, for there shall be no other work that shall be going on, but the medical missionary work or the relief work, which will be a means as an entering way to bring the third angel's message to the hearts of the people. The work of health reform is the Lord's means for lessening suffering in our world and for purifying his church. Testimonies, Volume 9, page 112, 113, Christian Service 135.9. And so, health reform, as we have seen in the book of 3 John, verses 2, that the Lord will wish as we prosper our health, it should be in the same as we prosper with the spiritual meaning that this goes hand in hand and it is a cleansing work, it is a purifying work. We are looking at number 15 in the series, Our Higher Calling, and we are looking at medical missionary work, which is a cleansing work. That which God designed should be the hand and arm will take the place of the whole body and the ministry will be belittled or altogether ignored. This will unsettle minds and bring in confusion and many portions of the Lord's vineyards will be left and work. The medical missionary work should be a part of the work of every church in our land. Disconnected from the church, it will soon become strange metal of disorganized atoms. It will consume but not produce. Instead of acting as God's helping hand to forward his tray, truth, it will serve the life and force from the church and weaken the message. Conducted independently, it will not only consume talent and means needed in other lines, but in the very work of helping the helpless apart from the ministry of the world, it will place men when they will score at Bible truth. The gospel ministry is needed to give permanence and stability to the medical missionary work, and the ministry needs the medical missionary work to demonstrate the practical working of the gospel. Neither part of the work is complete without the other. So, in righteousness by faith, while you believe that the Lord will do what he has promised to do, the medical mission work is the active faith 
in the message of righteousness by faith, the medical mission work as a cleansing work is the practical active aspect of righteousness by faith. And so the gospel ministry cannot be separated or dissected into independent atom of evangelism and then the negligence of medical missionary work. A message to our ministers. To my ministering brethren, I will say, prosecute this work with tact and ability. Set to work the young men and the young women in our churches. Combine the medical missionary work with the proclamation of the third angel's message. Make regular organized efforts to lift the churches out of the dead level in which they have fallen and have remained for years. Send it into the church workers into the send it into the church workers who will set the principles of health reform in their connection with the third angel's message before every family and individual. Encourage all to make a part in work for their fellow men and see if the breath of life will not quickly return to these churches. You start understanding that actually the medical missionary work, it is a cleansing work because it imparts the breath of life. And this breath of life, it is not a physical life you are speaking about. Remember when Christ healed everyone, he said, go and sin no more. And so as we do the medical missionary work, what, and you know that every sin is, every sickness is a consequence of sin. And so the, to get at the root of the matter is a practical aspect of the medical missionary work. We are told that with such an army of workers as our youth likely trained might furnish how soon the message of a crucified risen and soon coming savior might be carried to the whole world. How soon might the end come, the end of suffering and sorrow and sin? How soon in place of possession here with it is light, blight of sin and pain, our children might receive their inheritance where the righteous shall inherit the land and dwell therein forever, where the inhabitants shall not say, I am sick, and the voice of weeping shall be no more heard. Education, page 271. Messages to Young People, 196, paragraph 1. Read the scriptures carefully, and you will find that Christ spent the largest part of his ministry in restoring the suffering and afflicted to health, and in our work as Christ's co-laborers, we shall have success if we work in on practical lines. Ministers, do not confine your work to giving Bible instruction. Do practical work. Seek to restore the sick to health. This is true ministry. Remember that the restoration of the body prepares the way for the restoration of the soul. The book of James chapter 1 verses 27 it says that true, uh, 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 the true religion that is acceptable before God is visiting the poor, the orphans, the fatherless, and keeping yourself unspotted. This is the acceptable work that the Lord has given unto us. And the restoration of the physical prepares for the restoration of the soul. As you can see, Medical Missionary 240, paragraph 1. And these are intertwined, and that is why medical missionary work is a cleansing work not only a detoxification of the toxic substances in the body, but the cleansing of the soul, the cleansing of the soul. Intemperance has well nigh filled the world with disease, and the ministers of the gospel cannot spend their time and strength in relieving all in need of help. The Lord had ordained that Christian physicians and nurses will labor in connection with those who preach the word. The medical missionary work is to be bound up with the gospel ministry, MM, Medical Missionary Manual 240, paragraph 2. Medical missionaries are to have as much encouragement as any accredited evangelist. Pray with these workers, counsel with them if they need counsel, do not dampen their zeal and energy. Be sure by your own consecration and devotion 
to keep a high standard before them. The medical missionary workers are to be purified, sanctified, ennobled. They are to rise to the highest point of excellence. They are to be molded and fashioned after the divine similitude. Then they will see what health reform and medical mission work are to be bound up with the preaching of the gospel. And something has to be spoken here which is clear unto our mind. Medical mission work is not Herbalism, where actually somebody calls you having a disease and all you have to do is prescribe a natural remedy to heal the person. Medical missionary work is directing the sin-sick soul to the Savior who is able to heal not only the physical body but the spiritual soul. In that even if you lose a patient in your hands when they are under your care, their soul is prepared for eternity. And that is why we say this is a higher calling, this is a cleansing work. And we find that the reason why church members do not understand this branch of the work is that they are not following the light walking step by step after their great leader. The medical mission work is of God and bears his signature. For this reason, let man keep his hands off it and not desire to manage it according to his own ideas. Uh, and uh, the, the prophet says this in uh, Councils on Health, page 533, paragraph 1. She says, I wish to tell you that soon there will be no work done in ministerial lines but medical missionary work. The work of a minister is to minister. Our ministers are to work on the gospel plan of ministering. So we see that there will be no other work left but the uh, medical missionary work. And our ministers have to show decided interest in medical missionary work the gospel of healing and blessing and strengthening. Come up to the help of the Lord, to help of the Lord against the mighty powers of darkness. And why has the Lord actually given us the medical missionary work as a cleansing work and actually the work that is to finish the gospel, our higher calling? I will want you to see something on the screen that I'll put uh, how character is uh, uh, how our character is made complete. How do we attain uh, the completion of uh, our character? Christ object lesson page 384 paragraph Two, this is what we find. It says, the completeness of Christian character is attained when the impulse to help and bless others springs constantly from within, when the sunshine of heaven fills the heart and is revealed in countenance. So, Christian character is completed or it's attained by the impulse of medical missionary work. Without medical missionary work, then Christian character cannot reach its completion. Brothers and sisters, now you can start seeing how the medical missionary work is a cleansing work. You can see how the medical missionary work is a uh, cleansing work, how the medical mission work is a uh, cleansing cleansing work. And I apologize for those who are viewing and it went off. I like just to reconnect back and continue in the series that the medical mission work is uh, a cleansing work. It's a uh, cleansing uh, 
work and everyone has to uh, embrace it everyone has to embrace uh, this work this is what the lord is calling us to do And so, continued on, God is calling his church to be involved, to take hold of the medical mission work, and it will give you success to the people. Where we have been facing difficulties in uh, 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 actually doing the gospel work, the Lord will make it a successful work. Uh, it, it, and this work doesn't have to be done in a tame, spiritless uh, way. It has to be done with uh, 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 an effort, uh, uh, an energy. We should consecrate ourselves to it. And the indifference among our ministers in regard to health reform and the medical mission work is surprising, actually. Even those who do not profess to be Christian treat the subject with greater respect than do some of our own people, and these are going in advance of us. And so the work that the Lord has given unto us is to be carried unto the four corners of the uh, into the four corners of the world. We do not have to fear the work that the Lord has given unto us. The work that the Lord has given unto uh, us to to do. And so, the giving of the gospel to the world is the work that God has committed to those who bear his name. For us, sin and misery, the gospel is the only antidote. To make known to all mankind the message of the grace of God is the first work of those who know it is healing power. We are looking at the, the medical mission work a cleansing work, the work that the Lord has given to the church, that it's not just an ordinary work, it is a work that binds up the third angel's message. What we need to understand best, we need to be enlightened in regard to the plan of salvation. There is not one in a hundred who understands for himself the Bible truth on this subject that is so necessary to our present and eternal welfare, view and herald. And... Um, God's purpose in giving the third angel's message to the world is to prepare people to stand true to him during the investigative judgment. This is the purpose for which we establish and maintain our publishing houses, our schools, our sanitariums, hygienic restaurants, treatment rooms, and food factories. This is our purpose in carrying forward every line of work in the course. And so, if we are not doing the medical missionary work, then we are preparing to fall. We are not preparing to stand during the investigative judgment. And so this is, and you know, it is only sin which makes people to fall. It is sinless stand which makes people to stand. And it is the medical missionary work that actually helps us to stand during the investigative judgment. And this is why we establish our publishing houses. We establish our schools, our sanitariums, our hygienic restaurants, treatment rooms, and food factories. It is to stand true to God during investigative judgment. And uh, I won't go to that. The Lord has shown me clearly, and I, I won't go to that. I'll skip this and just come to something uh, here. The enemy of man and God is not willing that this truth should be clearly presented, for he knows that if the people receive it fully, his power will be broken. So the only power to break the work of the enemy is to practice the medical mission work and we are told that it is the third angel's message now listen to this what i skip it prepares us to stand during investigative judgment 
between the dead and the living. And the Lord has shown me that the image of the beast will be formed before probation closes, for it is to be the test for the people of God by which their eternal destiny will be decided. This is the test that the people of God must have before they are sealed. All who prove their loyalty to God by observing his law and refusing to accept a superior Sabbath will run under the banner of the Lord God Jehovah and will receive the seal of the living God. Those who yield the truth of heavenly origin and accept the Sunday Sabbath will receive the mark of the beast. And we are told that the reason why God has given us the Third, God has given us the third angel's message to the world is to prepare them to stand true to him during investigative judgment. And this is where we establish our publishing houses, our schools, sanitariums, hygienic restaurants, treatment rooms, and food factories. And so, brothers and sisters, if we are not practicing this work, then we are preparing to fall and not to stand. We are preparing to fall and not to stand. And uh, uh, I, I like to say the work is not to be carried on such a self-sacrificing that way that an unfavorable impression will be made on the minds of the people because of it is meager showing. All that is done is to bear favorable witness to the author of truth. The worship of God in the beauty of holiness demands a dignity and nicety that is in harmony with the sacredness and importance of the truth. Letter 49.1902 to S. N. Haskell and wife. And that is why we are saying that the medical mission work is a cleansing work. It is a higher calling. We cannot aim for nothing lesser than actually ministering to the people and getting their physical condition ready to be able to receive the spiritual blessing, which is the latter rain that cometh from the Lord. She says in Testimonies to the Church, Volume 6, page 440, a great work must be done all through the world, and let no one conclude that because the end is near, there is no need of special effort to build up the various institutions as the cause shall demand. You are not to know the day or the hour of the Lord's appearing, for this has not been revealed, and let us speculate on that which has not been given to understand. Let everyone work upon that which has been placed in his hand, doing daily duties that God requires. When the Lord shall bid us no further effort to build meeting houses and establish houses, schools, sanitariums, and publishing institutions, it will be time for us to fold our hands and let the Lord close up the work. But now is our opportunity to show our zeal for God and our love for humanity. Now, I like to say something that, um, uh, and I'll keep repeating that um, the medical missionary work is a higher calling, it's a, 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 a a work of cleansing unto the church in that it prepares the soul for the receiving of the latter rain. And the medical missionary work is the summation of the second table of the stone. The first table of the stone is love God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. And the second table is love your neighbor as you love yourself. And if you love your neighbor, you will be able to be ready to administer to their needs, not only summonizing and giving out the leaflets, but spreading the gospel of health and supplying the physical needs which they are actually lacking. And so the medical mission work is a cleansing work in that it covers the second table of the Ten Commandments, which is love God, we love your neighbor with all your heart. And so the first table is about God, and the second table is about our fellow neighbors, and it is the medical missionary work, which is the active, practical, living principle of practicing righteousness by faith. 
what the Lord has promised to do, he will accomplish it through his ministers. We are partners, to be partners in the work of God throughout the world, wherever there are souls to be saved. We are to lend our help that many sons and daughters may be brought to God. The end, brethren, is near, and for this reason we are to make the most of every entrusted ability and every agency that shall offer help to uh, the work. And uh, uh, in this medical mission work, schools must be established, youths must be educated, uh, everyone must be engaged in the ministry, not only in summonizing, but actually carrying out industrial work and teaching others to be dependent, not to be to be independent and not to be dependent upon others. In teaching people the industrial work, which actually covers the medical missionary work, uh, telling people how can they can relieve the physical needs of themselves and others, this is the work that the Lord has commissioned that we should be doing. Read the book of Isaiah chapter 58, you will find that this is the first that the Lord has ordained in the third angel's message. We always talk about the third angel's message and what we have to do in order for the latter rain to come upon us. And on the day of atonement, the children of Israel gathered about the sanctuary, prayed and afflicted their souls. And we are told in Isaiah chapter 58, the only way to fast, afflict our souls, and to gather before the sanctuary is to practice the medical missionary work. Our physicians are to be God's workers. And under the influence of the gospel, great reforms will be made by medical missionary work. There is something that happens in the book of John, chapter 20, verses 22. When you read the book of John, chapter 20, verses 22, you find that uh, Christ breathed upon his disciples and told them, Receive ye the Holy Ghost. And then when you turn to the book of Mark, chapter 16, verse 20, if I'm not wrong, uh, uh, the book of, uh, yes, it should be the book of uh, Mark, chapter, Mark chapter 16. You can check with me what the book of Mark chapter 16 actually said. That uh, after he had breathed upon them, the Lord wo when, was with them as they went about doing the work. And they went forth and proclaimed everywhere the Lord working with them and confirming the word with signs following. And so, uh, uh, get this one clearly, that uh, the Lord breathed upon them and said, Receive ye the Holy Ghost, and they went about signs accompanying them. But we find that these are not the signs that shall be exhibited in the end time. And so the signs shall pass through the medical mission work. The agencies that the Lord has ordained for a miracle which Satan cannot counterfeit. We are called to this humble duty, brothers and sisters. We may look at them as nothing that is much of importance. But as we do this work, we shall find that it will be an opening. And in the book of Isaiah, chapter 60, then we are told that uh, the light of the Lord will arise upon us, and the multitude shall come unto our light and ask of the Lord whom we serve. And so the medical mission work is a, such a, a noble work that should be embraced ev with everyone. And... Uh, I'll just like to put something on the screen too, that um, I like to put something on the screen. Look at this. And uh, medical mission of cooks are needed. Cooks are few. Very many mothers need to take lessons in cooking that they may set before the family will prepare neatly served food. And you ask yourself, in the work of medical mission on which you are saying it's a cleansing work and a higher calling, how is cooking related to religion? And 1 Corinthians 10, 31 answers you. Where for you eat or you drink, do it for the glory of God. 
when the stomach is impaired, we are told that the brain is at the sympathy with stomach, and uh, we are told that um, uh, uh, the wrong habits of eating, we are told that they affect a erroneous erroneous eating and drinking actually results into erroneous thinking and acting. And so you can see how this is bound up. I, I, I don't know if I can find that and so put up on the screen so that um, you may see it. Uh, erroneous eating, it results in erroneous acting. Let me see if uh, I can, it, it should be in testimonies, either volume three or volume six. Uh, I, I can't, let me see, and, uh, I'm sorry, the volume nine of testimonies, page 159, paragraph three, paragraph three. Look at this, brothers and sisters, look at this. Er, uh, uh, will those, let me start the paragraph. We are not to make the use of flesh food a taste of fellowship, but we should consider the influence that professed believers who use flesh foods have over others. As God's messengers, shall we not say to the people, whether therefore you eat or drink whatsoever you do, do all to the glory of God. First Corinthians 10, 31. Shall we not bear a decided testimony against the indulgence of perverted appetite? Will any who are ministers of the gospel, proclaiming the most solemn truth ever given to mortals, set an example in returning to the flesh pots of Egypt? Will those who are supported by the tithe from gold storehouse permit themselves by indulgence to poison the life-giving current flowing through the veins? Will they disregard the light and warnings that God has given them? The health of the body is to be regarded as essential for growth in grace and the acquirement of an even temper. If the stomach is not properly cared for, the formation of an upright moral character will be hindered. So there is religion in cooking. If the stomach is impaired, it impairs the moral character. The brain and nerves are in sympathy with the stomach. Erroneous eating and drinking result in erroneous thinking and acting. So there is religion in cooking. And that is why we are saying uh, that um, uh, we are uh, to preach the and practice the medical missionary work because it is a cleansing work. Look at this. Results of poor cooking. Poor cookery is wearing away the life of life energies of thousands. More souls are lost from this cause than many realize. In, in it dangers the system and produces disease. In the condition thus induced, heavenly things cannot be readily discerned. Scandy ill-cooked food depresses the blood by weakening the blood-making organs. It drains the system, brings on disease, with it is a combination of irritable nerves and bad tempers. The victims of poor cookery are numbered by thousands and ten thousands. Brothers, that is shocking. Over many graves might be written, died because of poor cooking, died of an abused stomach. Teach your children how to cook. Do not neglect to teach your children how to cook. In so doing, you impart to them principles which they must have in their religious education. In giving your children lessons in physiology and teaching them, to, them how to cook with simplicity and yet with skill, you are laying the foundation for the most useful branches of education. Skill is required to make good light bread. There is religion in good cooking, and I question the religion of that class who are too ignorant and too careless to learn to cook. Child Guidance 374, paragraph 2. And so, brothers and sisters, you can see how medical missionary work is a cleansing work. It is not something that I have just uh, coined about. It is something that actually it is practical it is something that the Lord will have us practice. And uh, 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 when our sanitariums and our schools are connected to this work and they give in with the gospel commission, then where the grounds has been so infertile, we shall reap forth a bounty 
of uh, 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 of, of souls. And uh, uh, there are many lines of medical missionaries we have to practice. We must have Christian farmers. We must have a people who will demonstrate what the Lord can do if we put our faith in him. We must have carpenters. We must have blacksmiths. We must have a people who are doing a useful labor to show that they only depend on God with the skills that they are actually uh, exhibiting or they are uh, practicing. We must have bookkeepers, seamstress, we must have nurses, and we must have different lines of work. People think that uh, the medical missionary work is only the work of prescribing herbs and doing hot food baths. That is not the work that is actually medical missionary work. Medical missionary work encompasses a whole system of truth and a lifestyle, uh, uh, a living lifestyle. It is a combination of what makes a person attain a complete Christian character. And so there must be various lines of work that are joined together with the gospel work. People have to be actually trained in being dependent. And, uh, and uh, look at how this work is a cleansing work. Uh, I'll go back to my screen. I hope I, I, I get it right this time. Uh, look at this. This is uh, Testimonies to the Church, Volume 6, page 190, paragraph 1. We are told the students who will get the most good out of life are those who will leave the word of God in their connections and dealings with their fellow men. Those who receive to give will feel the greatest satisfaction in this life. Those members of the human family who live for themselves are always in one, for they are never satisfied. There is no Christianity in shutting up our sympathies to our own selfish hearts. The Lord has ordained channels through which he lets flow his goodness, mercy and truth, and we are to be co-workers with Christ in communicating to others practical wisdom and benevolence. We are to bring brightness and blessing into their lives, thus doing a good and holy work. And so there is no Christianity in shutting our sympathies, which means that it is not Christianity, but something else. And so uh, God will want us to employ all our strength, not only in summonizing, but in ministering, in educating, and in bringing people to positions that they will have a communion with God. As religious teachers, we are under obligation to go to teach the students how to engage in medically missionary work. This is something which is so important. And I, I, I want to bring you the second section of this presentation, which actually have to deal with the falling or the latter end. And although I have talked about it in passing, now I want to delve in it fully and how this work is related in Lateran. Uh, we know in the Seventh-day Adventist a man called Dr. Kelo. And this is what Sister E.G. White talks about Dr. Kelo. I want you to pay attention to this. On October 10, November 5, 1888, there was a ministerial institute and a general conference session held at Minneapolis. After that session, in the general bu conference bulletin, April 6, 1903, these are the words of E.G. White concerning Dr. Kello. She says, after the meeting at Minneapolis, Dr. Kello was a converted man and we all knew it, we could see the converting power of God working in his heart and life. I want to demonstrate how the medical missionary work uh, 
is a higher calling and a cleansing work and how it is to bring about the latter rain. Notice very carefully, she says, after the Minneapolis conference, Dr. Kellogg was a converted man. Now remember Sister White is talking about a man who had been in the work for almost 10 years and had counted himself a Christian. It is only in 1903 that the prophet says that this man is converted. What do you mean prophetess? A person has been 10 years in Christianity and then you are saying that this is when he is converted. What do you mean by these words? Let us see what she says, these words there. Time setting of this statement. I do not believe we have a right to accumulate money. What was Dr. Kellogg teaching that made Sister White says that now she, he was a converted man? This is what Dr. Kellogg was teaching, and I want you to pay careful attention. He was saying, I do not believe we have any right to accumulate money. I think as long as we are well and have God's blessing upon our work, it is our duty to spend what we earn in God's work. I do not believe that in this age any man has a right to accumulate money. General Conference Bulletin Daily Bulletin, March 20, 1891, page 178. Command those who are rich in this present age not to be haughty, not to trust in certain riches, but in the living God, who gives us richly all things to enjoy. Let them do good that they may be rich in good works, ready to give, willing to share, storing up for themselves a good foundation for the time to come, that they may lay hold on eternal life. Start noticing what Kellogg has stated preaching and practicing. We are going on. That the man of God may be completely thoroughly equipped for every good work. Those who have believed in God should be careful to maintain good works. And where is Kellogg headed with this sermon of his? And let our people also learn to maintain good works, to meet urgent needs that they may not be unfruitful, that he might redeem us from every lawless deed and purify himself, uh, his own special people, zealous for good works. What are these good works, Kellogg, you are talking about? First Corinthians 11.1, 1. Paul exhorts, Be followers of me even as I also am of Christ, who Peter tells us left us an example that you should follow his steps. Acts chapter 10, verse 38. Peter tells us that Christ went about doing good. It is evident then that if we are Christ's servants, if we follow Christ, we must also go about doing good. We are not to wait for the opportunities for doing good to come to us, but we must go about doing good, seeking opportunities to do good, to help the needy, to bless and to comfort the sorrowing, to uplift the fallen. We must search them out, not wait for them to hand us up and move us to action by their appeals. We are not to be narrow in our charities, for Paul says to us in Galatians 6.10, Let us do good unto all men. It is true, he adds, especially unto them who are of the household of faith. But this does not excuse us from doing good to those who are not of the household of faith, for he says all men, and certainly we cannot hide behind this apology, for we have not been good even to those belonging to our household. So here is the sermon of Dr. Kelo continued on. For years and years we have been well able to furnish a home for the aged, the infirm, the homeless, the poor widows, worn-out ministers, aged pilgrims, and helpless children, members of our, our denomination, old pioneers in the course who gave liberal for their property, of their property in the early days when the work was just beginning, and whose faith in the truth which we profess have led them to pull all their earnings into the course instead of holding up a competency for themselves. All these worthy and deserving ones who appeal to us on fraternal as well as humanitarian grounds, we have neglected in a manner which have become a denominational disgrace. The Bible teaches us to the same thing that we ought to be good more than others, but we are doing less. Now, can we expect, now this is the statement when Caleb was preaching his sermon, this is the statement that stirred the crowd and you will see their response in a minute's time. He says, now we can expect the loud cry to begin while we are so neglectful of need around us. We may imagine that the Lord is going to work miracles for us. 
and do this work himself, but he will not. We need not expect that the loud cry will begin until we do what the Lord wants us to do. Now, look at the response of the congregation immediately. The voices in the congregation, the loud cry has already begun. Dr. Kellogg now retorts, we ought to be able to show that we are doing what the Lord says should be done first. Voices, it has begun, Dr. Kellogg. Then we shall see this work that the Lord tells us must be done, begin right away. Now the question is whether the Seventh-day Adventists are going to lead in this work, or is it going to be left for someone else to do? The Lord has given us here a very precious work to do. It is not the wall of the third angel's message, but it's a part of it. You read Isaiah 58, how we can make our light shine. If thou draw out thy soul to the hungry and satisfy the afflicted soul, then shall thy light rise in obscurity and thy darkness be as the noon day. If we want the loud cry to begin, brethren, that is the place where it's going to begin. Isaiah 58. The loud cry is going to begin with our doing the things that the Lord in this chapter says come before the loud cry. So he says we must draw out our soul to the hungry and satisfy the afflicted soul. He says if we will do this, our light shall shine. The question from the congregation don't you think the loud cry has commenced? Kellogg answers, I don't know. I am presenting this subject of medical missionary work from my standpoint. There is everything to indicate that the Lord is anxious to have the loud cry begin to sound. But he says these things referred to in Isaiah 58 must first be done in this direction have been done by other people, not by us. The time the crux of the matter, in 1892, the prophet had just said, the time of test is just upon us, for the loud cry of the third angel has already begun in the revelation of the righteousness of Christ, the seed-pardoning redeemer. This is the beginning of the light of the angel, whose glory shall fill the whole earth. And so, this was the argument of Caleb, that if we would say that the loud cry has begun, then we have to demonstrate by the works of Isaiah chapter 58, which actually was not being done by our people, but was being done by other people. And then the Lord had started to reveal Isaiah chapter 58 to the church. Kellogg continues to say, Brother Jonas may be right in thinking that the time has come for the loud cry to begin, but if the loud cry has been begun by our people, it must be because we have just begun to do a little in the way of letting our light shine. But we have done so little in that way. It seems to me that before the loud cry will make any great noise in the world, we will have to let our light shine a great deal brighter than we have ever, ever yet uh, uh, done. Because the works comes first. The light must shine through these good works before we can be called the repairers of the bridge and the restorers of paths to dwell in. For that promise comes after all this condition, you see. And so, uh, in, in uh, uh, he says that our lights must rise higher and higher. This was the argument of Dr. Kellogg that unless Isaiah chapter 58 is done, then there is no loud cry. And you see that now this is the higher cleansing. This is our higher calling because it brings in the latter rain that is spoken as it is in Isaiah chapter 58. And he says the work must go on for the latter rain to be given unto us. And when he started to do this work, when he started to do this work, then the prophetess said that Kelo has now been converted. You see how medical missionary work is a converting work, a higher cleansing work, and our higher calling. So the crux of the matter is that the ministers 
and medical missionary workers must be united. And if they are not united, the loud cry will not come. And when you separate the two, it is the worst evil that can ever come upon the church. Why is it the worst evil? Because it doesn't prepare a people to stand during investigative judgment, and then Christ cannot come out of the most holy place. Uh, our medical mission workers ought to be interested in the work. The conference must unite in. The people must come together. The people must come together and be able to demonstrate that they understand the work that the Lord has uh, given unto us. And uh, uh, the prophet says in Testimonies, Volume 9, that uh, uh, henceforth medical mission work is to be carried forward with an earnestness with which it has never yet been carried out. We have just seen a glimpse of this work, but it has to be carried forward with such a, a mighty interest, with a, such a mighty uh, movement. It will, uh, it will expel the selfishness that is in the people, and it will compel people to come out of uh, their comfort zones and go out as even Christ went about doing work. In fact, we read in Ministry of Healing, page 143, that uh, Christ's method alone will bring true success. He mingled with the people as if he were interested in their, uh, uh, in their wants, and then uh, he, he provided for their needs, and then he bid them to come. We are bidding people to come, yet we can relieve their problems. This can never be a higher calling. This can not, never be a cleansing work. And uh, the, the reason why we are so much in comfort is because selfishness has not been slain in us. It is the reason why we don't see the necessity of going outside and doing the work which the Lord has told us to do. I want to tell you a success story. I want to tell you a success story as we draw closer to this uh, end to the uh, as we draw closer to the end of this presentation, and I want you to pay attention to this uh, success story, brothers and sisters. This is the session, medical missionary work, a cleansing work. It is in the series our higher calling, and this is what the Lord has told us to do. If we will see our work crowned with success. I want to tell you a story, and uh, I hope the people online and the people listening, you are being blessed by the presentation. Welcome, Brother Ezra. Welcome, Brother Damba. Welcome, Brother Medlu. And welcome, Brother uh, Van Zoom. God be with you, and uh, let us go through this success story. Meeting the need. Yesterday it all opened before me, says the prophet, that in this very line of hospitality, I have been repeatedly shown that we can unite the people with us and can have twofold influence over them. This was unfolded before me in the first experience in this work many years back, and we have ever linked our interest with humanity. Now the success story follows. I started out, Sister, Sister White is narrating a story about medical missionary work and how it is a cleansing work, how it's a higher calling. She goes on uh, to say, I started out with Sister Louise last Sunday morning to visit some of the subjects for the purpose of taking a few photographs to throw upon the screen in talking about this work to interest people in it. I had no sooner turned the corner than a little girl shouted out at the top of her voice, Oh, here is Sister Louise, and ran and threw her arms about her and expressed the greatest delight at seeing her. Her cry attracted others, and soon children were running from every direction shouting, Sister Louise, and in a few minutes there was such a crowd I had to go out into the middle of the street. They fairly pulled and pushed her along the street, there was such a, a mob of them. They filled up the sidewalk away out in the street. And before we had gone a block, there were more than 50 children in all, all worshipping Sister Louise. 
I felt very small and insignificant beside Queen Louise. Praise the Lord. The prophetess felt very small and insignificant beside, sis, Queen, uh, beside Queen Louise. Why? She had been practicing medical missionary work. Sister Louise had been in their homes and nursed them when they were sick and given up to die. Some of them had nursed their mothers and cared for them, had shown them how to clean up their homes and make them brighter, and given them little picture cards and flowers, and had said kind words to them, and like their parents, they were ready to go down on their knees to her. Brothers and sisters, do you understand how medical missionary is the third angel's message? How it's a cleansing work? How it's a higher calling? A work that will bring people on their knees for Seventh day Adventists. How deplorable it is that we have neglected such a high calling. It is no trouble for any of our nurses to gather any number of children together for a Sabbath school. This is a success story continuing. And no trouble to keep them absolutely quiet, even though they are brought in from very lowest hands of voice in the city. It is perfectly wonderful what power there is in the influence of medical mission work. Sister White is saying that you be, give, be given a group of children to keep them quiet in a church. Children coming from various cities and see if you can attain that. But Sister Louise was able to do this thing. Why? Because of the medical mission work. And so this is the work of reviving the churches. The Lord does not work to bring many souls into the truth because of the church members who have never been converted and those who were once converted but who have backslidden. Because why the prophetess? There is a lot among, there is vast amount of rubbish brought forward by professed believers in Christ which blocks up the way to the cross. Not, not, uh, 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 not withstanding all this, there are some who are deeply convicted that they will come through every discouragement and will surmount every obstacle in order to gain the truth. But had the believers in the truth purified their minds by obeying it, had they felt the importance of knowledge and refinement of manners in Christ's work, where one soul had been saved, there might have been 20. During the past six months, there have been a greater interest manifested in the church in the missionary meeting than for years past, and the attendance has been increased fourfold. So you see that the medical missionary work as it has been conducted, it has, it has brought many people into church attendance. It has brought many people in, uh, in, into uh, church attendance. And that is why we say that this is a work of cleansing. When we enter this path of influence, then bands will be organized in various suburbs. We will reach out unto people. Various groups shall be formed here and there. And then people will go about and many people will be reached with the third angel's message. And then the Lord will be able to come and take his church. We need to start progressing in this work. You will never be a gospel minister until you embrace medical missionary work. Because this is the right arm of the third angel's message. It is justification by faith in the third angel's message. And as the work began to be done, the prophet was asked, what do you think of the message these people are having? Several people were writing to her. What do you think of this message that this brethren are presenting? That is Wangona, Etijosness, and the work that Kellogg was teaching, uh, doing, the practical aspect of the third angel's message. And she said, uh, she said that this is the third angel's message in verity. And uh, let me screen this so that you may be able to see it. 
The message of Christ's righteousness is to sound from one end of the earth to the other to prepare the way of the Lord. This is the glory of God which closes the work of the third angel. The last message of mercy to be given to the world is a revelation of his character of love. The children of God are to manifest his glory. In their own life and character, they are to reveal what the grace of God has done to or for them. And that is why I say that medical missionary work is the fulfillment of the second table of the stones. Love your neighbor as you love your Cell. And uh, this third angel's message, this third angel's message and uh, 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 justification by faith in verity, this is what she says. We are looking at the medical mission work as a cleansing work and as a higher calling. Look at um, uh, uh, what she says concerning it. What said the Lord? This is our work today. What said the Lord in the 58th chapter of Isaiah? The whole chapter is of the highest importance. It is, is not this the past that I have chosen. God has to lose the bands of the wickedness to undo the heavy burdens and to let the oppressed go free and that you break every yoke. It's not to deal thy bread to the hungry and that thou bring the poor that are cast out to thy house. When thou seest the naked that thou cover him, and that thou hide not thyself from thine own flesh, then shall thy light break forth as the morning, and thine health shall spring forth speedily, and thy righteousness shall go before thee. The glory of the Lord shall be thine reward. Then shall thou call, and the Lord shall answer. Thou shalt cry, and he shall say, Here I am. If thy turn away thy foot from the Sabbath, from doing thy own pleasure on my holy day, and call the Sabbath a delight, the holy of the Lord, honorable, and shall honor him, not doing thy own ways, nor finding thy own pleasure, nor speaking thy own words. Then shalt thou delight thyself in the Lord, and I will cause thee to ride upon the high places of the earth, and feed thee with the heritage of Jacob thy father, for the mouth of the Lord hath spoken. And so, this is a work that we need not to be ashamed of. This is the work that will make the Sabbath be proclaimed more fully to the world. What can I say to my brothers and sisters who have shunned this work that the Lord has told us to do? Definitely you will never receive the latter rain. And I say this with confidence. No latter rain without Isaiah chapter 58. Pure religion and undefiled before God. And the Father is this, to visit the fatherless and widows in their affliction, and to keep himself unspotted from the world. The world needs today what it needed 1900 years ago, a revelation of Christ. And so the last message to be given is the revelation of that character he has given unto us. And uh, I'm looking at... Uh, uh, the Lord said that the poor shall not cease to be among us. And why did the Lord do this such a thing that the poor should not cease to be among us? Look at this, brothers and sisters. We are talking about the medical mission work, which is a, a cleansing work, a higher, a, a higher calling. This arrangement did not, however, wholly do away with poverty. It was not God's purpose that poverty should wholly cease. It is one of his means for the development of character. The poor, he says, shall never cease out of the land. Therefore I command thee, saying, Thou shalt open thine hand wide unto thy brother, to thy poor and to thy needy in thy land. Deuteronomy 15 verses 11 it is a means of development of character. So when the medical missionary work stretches its hand to the poor, then it is a means of character formation. It is a means of character formation. There is no other formula that we can use to finish the work but the formula that Christ has left us. 
We are told that the work that Dr. Kellogg was doing back in 1897 is the work that every Christian should be able to engage in. And we should be able to practice it with all our sincerity, with all happiness, and without murmuring. And we are told that if this work, the churches and the conference will not embrace and do it, then it will go forward without their approval. For it is the work that the Lord has ordained that it should be done. Any church which unsupports the medical missionary work, it is in a backsliding state because it is the work that the Lord has said it should be done to be an entering wage to the third angel's message. And uh, you look at the story of the Good Samaritan. This is the story that I'm closing up this presentation with, with those people who have been watching online, with the people who have been hearing me, and with the people who will watch the video. I'm closing with the story of the Good Samaritan. The Good Samaritan, uh, he was traveling, as we know, and uh, uh, he found a, a person who had been injured by the roadside, and the priest had passed there, the Levite had passed there, the commoners had passed there, but this man who was actually not knowledgeable in the Jewish religion was able to minister unto this person who was on the roadside. This is the medical missionary work. And Christ commended the good Samaritan more than he could commend the Levite or the priest because they never cared about the medical missionary work. And so they could not have an entering way to this person who had been smitten by robbers and preached to them the gospel of Christ because they had neglected his physical needs and impairing their success in ministering to his spiritual needs. And so the Lord is calling us in such a time as this. I have to say that the cause of God today will have been far in advance of what it is had we carried forward the work that the Lord had given us. If only we had worked according to the blueprint, then we would have seen the Lord crown his work and return to take his people uh, uh, for a honeymoon of a thousand years. But now the work has been long ere been done because there are people who will not take up the work of the medical mission work. This is the last thing I'm reading to you. This is the last thing I'm reading to you. It is found in Testimonies, Volume 9, page 167. It says, Henceforth, medical mission work is to be carried forward with an earnestness with which it has never yet been carried. This work is the door through which the truth is to find entrance to the large cities. I pray that the Lord will be with you. I pray that the Lord will guide you. And I pray that the churches and individuals will take upon the work and be able to go forth conquering to conquer. For the world is ready for their false messiah but the church is not ready for the true Messiah. Why? Because the work has not been done according to the blueprint, and so there have been so little success when a lot of resources have been actually used to evangelize. May God bless you, and may God work upon your hearts that you may see the necessity of starting something in your life. If the church doesn't embrace it, if the conferences don't embrace it, if the groups don't embrace it, personally do something and the Lord will attend it with success. You will experience a higher cleansing and you will meet the uh, uh, prerequisite for 
the higher calling. Otherwise, God bless us and let us pray in closing. Our Father, which art in heaven, we thank you for this presentation. We pray that uh, you may continue speaking to our hearts and Lord, your will may be done in our lives that we may carry forward the work according to the blueprint. Bless the children as they contemplate upon this work. For in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Blessings, brothers and sisters.